Today, as some of my friends, I invited someone to start or to open my presentation. Uh, he is my friend. He's, he cannot be here, but he made a video and to go to start my presentation. <laughs> So, what has been accomplished here in Brazil is nothing short of a marvel. It's often said that Brazil is a country of the future. Well, that future has now arrived. It's time for the United States to treat our engagement with Brazil on economic issues as seriously as we do with nations like China, and India, and this dialogue will help us do that. Thanks, friend. <laughs> <laughs> We know that it's not every day that a poor country becomes a rich country. The world has its powers and usually it takes a long time to change. As a kind of Christmas gift, Brazil received uh, uh, two months ago the news that it became the sickest largest economy in the world. It means that Brazil overtook UK as the side of his economy. And at that moment, I heard uh, a phrase from, from my, my friend. He said, guys, have you heard about Brazil? It became the sickest largest uh, economy in the world. It's kind of unbelievable. Uh, Bumping in Britain. Can you believe that? Everybody thinks that Brazil is a poor country. Uh, from that time, I started to ask me if my friends or if the people from North America, from Asia, or from Europe know about Brazil and know about the really development of uh, Brazil. Uh, and because of that, I decided to show or to try to show you guys what's the real situation of Brazil. Uh, from 1970s, uh, Brazil uh, started to be called as the country of the future. Uh, as Obama said, and a lot of people believe that, uh, this future arrived. But Brazil started to be called like that, called like this nickname, because of its, uh, its size, its population, and its it's uh, yeah the, the good things about the country, but over time Brazil showed that uh, he he was it was not ready to be big to be rich. Uh, a lot of reasons can be pointed, uh, and I'm gonna say like the hyperinflation it was a big problem, the dictatorship, and a lot of bad economic decisions. In 1994, Fernando Henrique Cardoso, uh, who that time was the finance minister of Brazil, created the real plan. This plan uh, was the very first step, or very important first step, that uh, helped Brazil to, to go to another, another level of growing. In 2001, John O'Neill created the Akron BRIC. BRIC means Brazil, Russia, India, and China. And he, John O'Neill, at that time said, these four countries are going uh, to be in the G6. G6 is the uh, sixth largest economy in the world. And looking at that table, we can see that, yes, his theory is 50% right until now. Uh, history, at that time, he said that uh, it is going to happen in four, uh, 2042. But today, we already have uh, China and Brazil between, among the six largest economies, and 
the, the forecast, the new forecast for 2020 is Brazil, China, Russia, and India between the six largest, among, uh, beside the China, the USA, and Japan. So it maybe uh, can make us think that, oh, Brazil have probably have the quality of life, people there is better than Italy or better there than the UK. Oh, very good. But uh, this is an answer that we maybe uh, could be not right. And now I'm going to show something for you guys that may can help help us to answer that, that point. Please. that uh, in these scenes no subtitles is the best that we can do because the ima image can show us uh, what better than any subtitles and uh, from this video as you can as you can as you saw the video is, 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 is some scenes from elite squad this is a, v a movie from Brazil really famous movie in Brazil and uh, and really kind of can be surprised something right? but this video is just fiction it's not a, something that you, uh, we Brazilians can see and uh, everywhere but yes some places in Brazil uh, we had problems like that we have problems that I'm gonna talk now Favela da Rocinha is the biggest favela in the Latin America there are a, around 106,000 people, 38,000 homes in an area like 720,000 uh, square meters. And I'm not talking about just a favela, I'm talking about a company. The organized crime there is really a company. I'm talking about one, mil one million of dollars in a week. This is the, the drug traffic. I'm talking about uh, an increase of profit around 45% in a year. I, I would like to invest my money in an investment like that, right? 45% in a year. Uh, and this place is a dominated place. I'm talking, I'm talking about some kind of, in this place, the favela, the Rocinha, the police could not enter that. The traffickers uh, were around there, and the police 
police can could not penetrate there. But two years ago, the um, the government of Brazil and the government of Rio de Janeiro started to struggle against the drug tra traffic. Uh, and two mo two months ago or three months ago, uh, uh, the, the the government occupied occupied, occupied the the favela da Rocinha. I'm talking about uh, 1,300 policemen, seven helicopters, 18 tanks, and a lot of driver dogs trying to figure out where the drug, to find the drug. The soldiers who had over then six three gun sites seized in the favela, 23,000 munitions, uh, three, 350 kilos of drug, 129 firearms, uh, 148 explosives and 150 motorcycles stolen. Stolen. Uh, this is Nan. This is this was the boss of this favela. This man made a lot of money. And this this picture is a uh, really great picture because uh, this is a kind of sign. It happened like two or three days uh, before the occupation. It this is a kind of sign that. Yes, we are going to catch the right people. We are going to catch and to, to end this kind of situation. Uh, now, I'm going to show you uh, some pictures of this, this really huge operation in Rio de Janeiro. You can see the post there. You can see the tanks going up. It's a kind of war, right? A lot of drugs, and uh, maybe the best thing that you that I can say about this war is uh, nobody died. Uh, there was no shots. There was no hurt people. Uh, was a really great job from the, the police of, of Brazil, and it's funny because here in this image. You can see a soccer field as we saw at the scenes from the scenes, and here, here you can see peace. Mm -hmm. You can see the, the yeah the community uh, living in peace, a peaceful place. And yes, that's not the perfect place. That's not the perfect situation for this place. But yes, uh, is way better than than we saw in the, the, the scenes of the movie. But, uh, talking about just bad things about Brazil is not good. <laughs> Brazil has a lot of good things. And that, that because of that, Brazil is the sixth largest economy, as I said. Let's, and, and I chose three points, really important points. Let's begin with my friend again. <laughs> The second place we want to partner with Brazil is on the issue of energy, which is why President Rousseff and I also agreed to launch a strategic energy dialogue. By some estimates, the oil you recently discovered off the shores of Brazil could amount to twice the reserves we have in the United States. We want to work with you. We want to help with technology and support to develop these oil reserves safely. And when you're ready to start selling, we want to be one of your best customers. Uh, before to, to talk about the first thought, um, it's my uh, opinion. Um, when the President of the United States is looking for some kind of partnership with a country, it means that, yes, this country has a lot of to offer, you know? It's a really sign of uh, a good sign for the country. Everybody, everybody is, or anybody here know, uh, knows what is Presalt? No? Presalt uh, was the largest uh, oil discoverer in the last 35 years in Brazil. Uh, this, this layer, this layer uh, was created by the separation of America and Africa a long time ago, a lot of years ago. And 
to explain that, you, you, I have this, this this chart can can show you the water that the pulse salt, the salt layer, and the press salt. Mm -hmm. It means that uh, there's some kind of eight thousand meters of deep. Brazil was the fir very first country to try to, to cut some oil there, and it was a really successful operation. Social programs, uh, maybe some of you guys know me, Luiz Nacio Lula da Silva, the ex-president of Brazil. He created the, some important social programs in Brazil, uh, maybe some of the biggest, biggest social programs in the world. And uh, with, with that and the development of the country, we had 20 million of Brazilians migrated to middle class. It means that 52% of the Brazilian population now is the middle class. And we know that to, if you want to be a big country, your middle class has to be really big, large. Uh, as you, everybody probably knows, uh, the FIFA World Cup and the Olympics are coming to Brazil. Brazil is investing some kind of 20 million, 20 million, then billion, sorry, of dollars in the FIFA World Cup, expecting 600 thousand people there. Uh, the people are going to 12 cities around the country and 12 stadiums. The stadiums are being uh, building or, uh, uh, or renovated. Uh, and investing 15 billion of dollars in the Olympics, expecting some kind of 380,000 people. This is the fifth largest uh, investment in all the Olympic story. It means that yes, Brazil is trying to have a really good Olympics in 2016. As you can see, the fifth is the largest investment in history. Uh, Embraer is the, Brazil, uh, the Brazilian company, Embraer, is the third aircraft uh, manufacturing company in the world. Probably two. You guys know about the Bombardier. It's like uh, today, Embraer is bigger than Bombardier. It's a Brazilian company. And finally, I chose that. The Brazil is the world largest cattle industry. Has the world largest cattle industry in the world. Uh, and it, I think, this kind of thing. Of course, Brazil has a lot of uh, more big things and big and good things, but the three like, maybe can help us to understand <coughs> the good part of our country. As a conclusion, I would say that some, 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 uh, some moments uh, you can, we can see a country become the sickest or largest economy in the world, but it doesn't mean that it's a, it's a rich country or it's a big country. Uh, it's really uh, necessary to understand uh, how this country is 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 going and yes Brazil is going in my opinion is going very well Brazil in, the, in 10 or 15 years is going to be to be a superpower in the world and uh, the, the question that I, I would like to leave here is if Brazil become a superpower what kind of, what kind of superpower Brazil would be I mean Usually, a, 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 a superpower country has he, its personality. What would be the personality of a superpower called Brazil? Let's see. If it happens, Brazil would be a different kind of superpower, one that would rather make love, not war. It has no nuclear arsenal, and aside from contributing a small number of troops to the Allied cause in 1944, Brazil hasn't fought a war since 1870. Why, why fight with all the pleasures, beach and sun, war? Forget it. <laughs> soccer? Let's watch a soccer game. <laughs> Let's go to the beach. <laughs> Let's drink a beer. Thank you.
Okay, thank you. All right, so, uh, okay, about 20 minutes. So, I'm always amazed looking at everybody's presentation after a couple weeks of working on it. So many people are just having this final product that's great. So, I, yours was really good PR for Brazil. And I'm glad you mentioned the great beaches at the end. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you, you really speak with uh, emphasis, you know, when something's important and you seem really an, an articulate uh, when you're speaking. And, you also seem very enthusiastic about your subject. So there is just a nice balance, a nice flow to the whole uh, presentation. Um, your statistics were really clear in your in your slides and so on. It was really good. Thank you. And first thing, just telling him right now, you always make me look bad. <laughs> but I just want to let you guys know right now that for myself, like I love to get feedback, but it's also recommendation because I always know how to improve and to get better and better. So I always give both sides. All right? Pardon me? Right. <laughs> so first again, the ums and the ahs. <laughs> you use quite a few of them at the beginning. So that's something you guys, I don't know if all of you know what it means, but a 30 second commercial, you know when you're networking and you're looking for work and they ask you, introduce yourself. The most important parts is always your introduction and your conclusion. Those are the two things that are vital for them to remember who you are. So remember that also with your presentation. Actually, with the beginning, even though we had to rewind in some sense, you did keep us in suspense. Because I actually thought, oh, his friend can't be here. I'm looking out the door and wondering who it is. And then you showed the, the video. I mean, that really kept us in suspense. And I like that. The visibility of the slide, there were two of them. One is the CEDR, World Economic League Table, and the Olympic Investment. And they were not very eligible. And that's very important when you give presentations that they can see, very visible, and they have really fine print. Okay, so just something to remember. Don't, and that, the only recommendation I would have is to be careful of using slang. One of them you said, guys, guys, guys. Okay. Yeah, be careful of using slang. And it would be good to, when I say you did a lot of um, animation, with the videos. Another idea is to include creativity. What I mean by that sense, you had a lot of passion. I mean, this is your this is your baby, Brazil, right? So like you, Brazil, you could have you know used stuff like in everyday life, or bring sample of food, wear your flag, like your T-shirt. You know what I mean? You did bring it. <laughs> 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 Yeah. I see them like right away. Yeah. I'm passionate. <laughs> and last but not least, it was excellent for you having less time to prepare than everybody else. All right. Thank you. All right.